then first, expect to kill a lot around to your house to give you a brain transplant, and second, you'd better relive the road to Armageddon. Over a thousand teams applied to take part in the fourth wars. Only 96 were chosen to do battle in the infamous Robot Wars arena. 32 of them seeded on past performance, innovation and design creativity. That's just under 300 competitors involved in the titanic struggle to become the victors. We've seen five months of carnage, destruction and metal mayhem. And now we're only moments away from the grand final. Only one can win. Only one will raise that coveted trophy and proclaim to the world they are the Robot Wars Grand Champions. Let's take a look at the story so far. Heat 1 saw the welcome return of reigning champions, the impressive Chaos 2, who stormed back into the arena and were quick to send indefatigable out. Newcomers to the wars, Medusa 2000, were tossed and turned and ended up in the pit. And Atomic managed to secure the same fate for King V3. With a little help from Sir Killalot. And in the heat final, Atomic felt the full wrath of Chaos 2, who started to show the sort of form which took them to the title in the third wars, and they claimed the first place in the series semi-finals this time around. In the second heat, Pussycat seed number 19 sunk Kitty Claws into Reptiron. They left the arena in a blaze of glory. So did Millie Anberg after its brush with Razor, the current world champions. Robo Chicken was no match for the cat either, and Razor did look promising in the heat final until they got stuck in forward gear and Pussycat got stuck in for some serious damage. The Razor team weren't happy that engineering faults had let them down for a second successive wars. The cat still had nine lives. Heat 3 saw the fifth seed Firestorm 2 back with more power and maneuverability than ever before. They quickly dispatched the more, while old favourites dear to last in a near few moments at the hands of Ming 2, before their dreams of making the semis went up in smoke. Again, problems for the Irish boys, doubling by the minute. The more got a lucky break, they were reinstated after Scar had to retire. In the heat final, they met Firestorm 2 again. They thought they'd beaten them when Firestorm fizzled out into the pit. But this excitement changed to despair, as after closer inspection, the judges ruled that the Morgan gone into the pit first, and Firestorm 2 got the judges' vote. So they've given it to Firestorm! Steg 2 returned for Heat 4 and soon showed Kronos a few lessons they'd learned from Chaos 2 about weaponry. 23rd seed Mortis was quick to conquer Masakari, and Steg 2 showed no fear with Iron pneumatic flipper weapons now becoming a major feature of this series. In the heat final, Mortis were flipped, and a fault with their self-writing mechanism meant they bombed out of the competition once more. Always bridesmaids, never the brides. In heat five, ground control all went wrong for Major Tom after it decided to disco the of doom with Matilda and then soft shoe shuffle with shunt. David Crosby and the girls from Dartford Girls Grammar School returned to the fourth wars with Son of Napalm, but they fell foul to the awesome Dominator too early on and ended up in the pit of oblivion. Oh, see me after class, teacher David! Dominator then dominated the fight against 101, whose lack of weaponry proved telling. Dominator, who'd only previously competed in pinball and not the main battles, took the eye of the judges. The decision is unanimous, and the winners are Dominator 2! <laughs> The sick heat brought double trouble in the guise of Gemini, the first of cluster box seen on Robot Wars. Along with Tornado, they were quick to get rid of Caterkiller and then crushed the creature's hopes. A slow step, some rock and roll, and then instead of softening the blow, the old heave-ho! But Tornado proved the strong silent type as it ran one half of Gemini onto an arena spike. Both halves had to be mobile to survive. Gemini speed controller blew, and Tornado breezed through. In Heat 7, it was a bright start, but then a gruesome tango for Gravedig of Sir Killalot. It saw the end of their challenge, they dug their own grave. And Thermidor 2 soon got its claws into Dreadnought XP1, the Dreadnought sunk. Thermidor then went on to make light work of Chronic the Wedgehog, who curled up into ball, rolled down into a pit, and went to eternal hibernation. Wedgehog team, be a little bit more spiky next time. Heat 8 was about revenge, we were told. Wheelie Big Cheese had a grudge to bear against a killer lot, but the Master of Mayhem wasn't in a playful mood with anyone. Newcomers Maverick rolled over to get its tummy tickled by suicidal tendencies and Charlie Bins. And Killatron saw its hopes disappear into thin air with the thin end of the cheese wedge. Wheelosaurus caught fire, but then were extinguished. And then controversy returned to the arena in the heat final, when even though Wheelie Big Cheese went into the pit first, 
the judges ruled differently. And the judge says that suicidal tendencies track wasn't working for a long time during that fight. So you didn't have control. So the judges have gone. For we bitches! <laughs> The Tate family, Centurion, didn't stick around for long in Heat 9. He went roaming into an arm wrestle with house robots to kill a lot and got the thumbs down from our Coliseum Caesars. Benny, Vidi, Bobbly, it came, it saw, and that's the rest. A splinter movement then proved too strong for Kilohertz, all hot bothered and uh, steamed up. Eric then made light work of small talk with the use of its unique spatula tongue. And in the heat final, tried to escape the clutches of Splinter, but to no avail. A hug, a kiss, a battle not to miss. Splinter went through. Heat 10 and Bulldog Breed gave the best of British to Spikosaurus and managed to dodge the impressive Stinger too. Next up, Bigger Brother, but a broken gas valve meant they couldn't sell rights and little Joe Watts could only look on in dismay. Stinger bludgeoned Hammer and Tong into submission in an all-Lincolnshire battle. Stinger fast emerging as major but surprise contenders. Hammer and Tong! Bing bong! And then in the heat final, Stinger met Bulldog Breed again. The Stinger stung. The doggy was left with the tail between his legs. The pendulum mace of Stinger had been too powerful. This robot was proving hard to tag. In Heat 11, no sooner had Evil Weevil and previous winner Kevin Pritchard entered the arena than it was out again on our Evil Ejector. Something along with Shunt gave 28th seed Weldor's hopes the axe. And another self-proclaimed Emperor Tiberius went in against Little Fly, but like the moth flew in ever-decreasing circles, and ended up in the pit of oblivion. Something grounded themselves and their winning streak on their own chassis. And the mousetrap snapped up victory just against Little Fly, thanks to a judge's decision. And they've gone for mousetrap! <laughs> With a little help from the team at RAF Odium, Plunderbird 4 arrived in style for Heat 12. Great entertainers and sports, they hyped the hype. They talked a good fight, but as usual, Mike and Brian's bark, I'm afraid, was louder than their bite. They had a free taste of victory. The Plunderbird boys had come a long way, baby, when Fatboy Tin got one in the eye. But Nightmare made their worst dreams come true. They were flipped up, over and out of the competition. As the nightmare spun around in our thoughts and in its deeds, the words, of course, came from Plunderbird. They didn't go quietly. How well are you going to do? How are you going to beat everyone up? You're not making so much noise now, are you? Well, it's a slight mechanical malfunction, but actually, before we go, before we leave you for this war, yeah. we actually like you to make some it. noise of our own. It. Right, listen, you lot, follow me. Shout out loud, make lots of noise. Shout out loud, make lots of noise. Thunderbird boys. It's to be done by the Thunderbird boys. Gonna stamp on you, gonna hit you hard. Gonna stamp on you, gonna hit you hard. Gonna send your robot to the breakers yard. Gonna send your robot to the breakers yard. What's the word? Thunderbird! The heat finals saw the Essex boys and Spawn of Scutter put Nightmare to bed with a 120 mile an hour spike. Who needs a Sremac? Well, they did. Not to be outdone by Blunderbird, Sir Chromalot arrived in style in Heat 13, and this time they brought along a few supporters. Who's going to win? Sir Chromalot! Oh, yes, the class act had certainly returned. But sadly, the wheels came off their challenge early thanks to the Steel Avenger. Steve Merrill and Dave Whitehead had looked the tops. But they were too heavy. Wild thing looked fearsome against Reactor. Quickly getting to the core of the problem and avoiding any fallout. Then driving skill and determination won the day against the Steel Avenger. Wild thing were through. The Adams family. The sixth-seeded Behemoth returned in Heat 14. They rolled Arnold, Arnold, Terminator, and rambled around the ring while the evil ejector made light work of the ponderous 160-kilo Millennium Bug. Exterminator 2's new Streamac helped them to victory against Behemoth, but it was very, very close, and it went to the judges. The 
Penultimate heat saw Series 2 champions Panic Attack say clearly over and out to overkill GTI and then raise a few issues with sore point. Meanwhile, Smitty was having fun showing Agrobot the sights. Hither and thither, the aggro starter with her. And Sir Killalot said, bye bye, bot. Smitty, though, proved no match for the driving skill of Kim Davis in the heat final. And Panic Attack was through to the semis once again. And in our last heat, Hypnodisc returned and took no time in reminding us why they've been dubbed the most destructive robot ever. We saw the insides of the Predator. And then late entrance VMAX probably wish they hadn't come at all. The boys from Hampshire looked as if they had a strong stomach for battle. We soon saw what they'd had for lunch, though. And finally, veterans Razorblade felt the full fury of Hypnodisc. The family rose had bloomed again. So, 16 robots were through to our semi-finals. In our first, eight robotic gods lined up to win the coveted place in the grand final. Chaos 2 soon got rid of Stake 2, and Wheelie Big Cheese looked promising against Tornado until a weak titanium well gave way, and the wheels topped off their challenge. Pussycat struggled at first against Thermidor 2, but the lobster ran out of steam. And the cat got the cream. Dominator 2 perforated Firestorm 2, and at that stage looked set to go through. Confident and powerful, but they hadn't reckoned on our two favourites. The reigning champions, Chaos 2, performing its party trick once more. And Pussycat and that awesome blade disrobing Dominator 2. And the cat went through to the grand final. Semi-final two, and Stinger soon took the spring out of the mousetrap step. Immobilized, the trap was now set by the house robot, and Sir Killalot's mercy killing meant one down, five to go. Panic attack soon sent Spawn scuttering back to Essex. Kim Davis and his former champions were highly fancied by now. And Hypnodisc turned the hopes of a very gallant splinter into sawdust. Excellent driving skills from Nick Adams saw Wild Thing terminate, Exterminator 2. The boast from the pits will be back, yeah? We'll be waiting. Then, one of the biggest surprises we've ever had. A thrilling battle. Panic Attack had the experience and fought weapons, but Stinger's innovative design meant it was hard to hit, and the judges by one point ruled it was the more aggressive. They've gone for Stinger! Then, Wild Thing stood up well to Hypno Disc's destruction, but there could only be one winner. Based on the awesome destructive power of Hypnodisc. They've gone for Hypnodisc! So, our four finalists! Pussycat! Hypnodisc! Stinger! And the reigning champs, Chaos 2! Return to the arena for the grand final. There's just time to commend all our roboteers for their hard work, innovation and creativity. Because the four walls are been the best yet. All the robots have stood their ground and fought to their last drop of oil. We've seen a wide variety of design, weaponry and destruction and in recognition of our team's achievements we've our special Merit Robot Wars trophies. <laughs> uh, what more could you possibly want? Even play, mate. <laughs> First up, the Sportsmanship Award, given in honour of the behind-the-scenes generosity of spirit and effort which makes Robot Wars the fun it is for taking part and not winning the Nomination, Sir Chrome, a lot with Steve Merrill and Dave Whitehead. Great fun with the pom-pom girls. Superb entertainers. Not very good in the arena. Cease. Back again, Dior Talk, Aaron Byrne and Peter Redman, the boys from Dublin. Again, they didn't go too far in battle, but behind the scenes, they helped everyone else out. A spot of welding from Kieran, a bit of electronics from Peter. And Plunderbird 4. Mike and Brian pulled out all the stops arriving in style in the Chinook. They didn't go very far in battle. The winners, Deal Tour for the third year running. The original Good Samaritans behind the scenes. The most original entry award to go to a robot created with a unique, fun and destructive design in mind. The nominations Robo Chicken, 
not really destructive, but great fun. Afraid to say they didn't get a great deal of luck in the arena. Gemini, a cluster bot, the first ever brilliant designer, feat of engineering skill, double trouble, a twin set, and pearl for the future. Something. All built from second-hand parts, a new age robot here, striving to compete against the super electronic forces of the future. And Pussycat, like a cat on a hot tin roof, always lands on its feet, a destructive play. We didn't quite see its full potential, I feel. Maybe next time. The winner, the brilliantly original Gemini, has that set a trend for the future? The Best Design Robot Award. This takes into consideration the weaponry, the machinery, the hardware, the big picture. And the nominations, Pussycat, second nomination for Alan Gribble and driver son David. Maneuverability and mashability married here. It can destroy its speed. Next up, The Creature. Saw them in the third wars with Tun Turin. Better design with a flipper and greater maneuverability, if not too much speed. Lovely artwork too. Thermidor 2, semi-finalists with a pneumatic flipper which could lift 100 kilos or more, electronic claws. They've learned a lot from mistakes in previous wars. And Gemini once again, two pneumatic flippers, each half independently controlled. You'd have to be a genius or schizo to come up with this design. And we say genius, a second award for Gemini, deservedly so. The best engineer robot only three nominations no one came close for pure engineering refinement for the bits in the box you never see the inside it's chaos two nominated reigning champions george francis and the engineer himself no changes to the machine through to the final once more says a lot about its power steel avenger john willoughby and his team veterans of the wars constantly improving the robot this year came with an axe with a self-riding mechanism oh and a duster to clear up the mess and Stinger, Kevin Scott and the boys from Lincoln with this ingenious design, all the electronics held inside two impregnable wheel hubs. And the winner, Steer and John Willoughby, his first award, long awaited. The Best Newcomer Award for those Robot Wars fans who watched previously, learned to then enter the machine themselves this time, like Robo Chicken, Plucky, Bray, fun design, but it had an axe and a flipper too. This was no featherweight, but chickens don't survive when a cat's in the roost. Tornado semi-finalists souped up their motors to 36 volts, giving extraordinary speed and power. They beat Jedi. This nomination is well-deserved there. A tiller drum, a mace-like weapon, a manic spinning motion, a whirling dervish, but perhaps better control next time around. And Mousetrap snapped up this nomination for originality of design of that deadly weapon, ensuring it was Gorgon's over for the unwary opponent. But the winner, mainly because of that victory over Gemini, Tornado! And just time to mention our other two arena events running in parallel to the big heavyweight competition, the Sumo Basho. Panic Attack, the only robot to survive. You had to stay on the Basho floor longer than Shunt. And Kim Davis managed it with Panic Attack. Well done. And the Pinball Warrior Tournament. Gemini, a staggering 255 points amassed around the arena floor. Hit the objects and the targets, dodged the house robots. They came late on in the event, Gemini, with a wonderful run to take the title of Pinball Warrior Champions. Gemini. Based on style, control, damage, and aggression. Chaos 2 have won all points. Chaos 2! Oh, the Roman Wars! Grand champion! Guys, you've done tremendously well. You've done tremendously well. You made it to the finals of Robot yeah, Wars. I'm happy with that. You're happy with that? Yeah. yeah. And you're going to come back next time? We'll be back next you're time. You're going to try and go one better, aren't you? They'll be ours. Let's hit <laughs> the Pussy Gap, Pussy! Jules, 
to present the award. Our Robot Wars grand finalists, Chaos 2! Well, start the fires. Give your applause. We found ourselves a winner on Robot Wars. Robot Wars. Robot Wars.